Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. Uh, this really the verse that I want to look at. We're going to look at a number of different verses, a little bit of a study to start, and then we'll give you some thoughts. But I want to, um, I want to share tonight on this thought about motivation. All right, motivation, and in particular, internally motivated. Internally motivated. A lot of us, a lot of us get motivation externally when when we're encouraged and people encourage us and motivate us. And and let's bring it a balance. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's good. But we shouldn't always be relying on that external motivation to get us to do something. Spiritual maturity, when we look at the scriptures, is all about internal, the internals of man. All right. Uh, I was saved, as you know, in 1980. The 80s was a, a, a great decade for Christianity. I mean, it was really the back end. If you look in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it was a, it was a massive growth period uh, for churches growing, tent meetings, crusades, thousands of people going to church. Look at Billy Graham in 1957 here. 100,000 people at the Billy Graham crusade but then when his son Franklin Graham comes to Brisbane, I heard there was around about three to 4,000 people. All right, now that's a big difference, isn't it? So from 1957, was it about 1957 when Billy Graham was here to 2019, where you've had 100,000 people go to a crusade to three to four, let's say 5,000. That's a big difference, isn't it? Um, so that 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s was a, was a, a, a wonderful period of the gospel message going out, people getting saved, churches growing and all of that. But here's a, and this is just my opinion and, and you might see it differently, but one of the things that I noticed growing up in the 80s in a church, it was all externally focused. Uh, it was very much a, a, a conforming, um, like, now I like to wear a shirt and tie, brother John wears a shirt and tie. I've never, except for brother Jeff, I've said to brother Jeff, look for us up the front, uh, we need to present well, so a shirt and I think a shirt and tie is good. But I've never asked a congregation to, hey, you've got to wear a shirt and tie, a suit and blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. Uh, ladies, I want you to wear this. I don't want you to wear that. Growing up in the 80s, it was very much an external thing. It was, uh, preachers were telling, remember Trace, that the women couldn't wear certain uh, stockings with a, with a line down the back and all this sort of stuff. And the skirt had to be, not allowed to have a, and I don't know, it's all modesty and that. But it was very much a, a, a big push on that and it was almost like what you looked like externally was holiness all right holiness well there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't put the cart before the horse if you if you preach and minister to the spirit of man and as the spirit of man the internal man gets fed and motivated it will show on the outward appearance but you've got to focus on the inward appearance first so what we want to look at tonight is this is this inward motivation all right now have a look at romans chapter one romans chapter one and of course paul look at verse number one paul a servant of jesus christ called to be an apostle separated under the gospel of god which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son jesus christ our lord which was made of the seed of david according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. So there is a spirit of holiness. See that? Little s, spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness. Now look at this. Whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Did you notice what he says? Whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel. So he was internally motivated to do what he was doing for the Lord. And that's, that's, that's the step of spiritual maturity. You know, when, when someone first gets saved and they don't know anything about Christianity, anything about church, 
there's a, there's a period of time where we encourage that young believer to, hey, uh, let's remember church on Sunday. Uh, don't forget to read your Bible. Don't forget to pray. And, uh, you know, don't forget handout tracks. So there's the basics of Christianity that we really motivate and encourage a new believer in. But there has to come a point in time in that Christian's life as they get older to not rely on the external motivation of another brother or sister, but to be internally motivated to do what he does or she does for the Lord. You, you ought to be at this point in time, most of us here have been saved for a long period of time. Well, there, there are times where you don't want to read the Bible, isn't it? There's times when you don't want to pray. There's times when you don't want to witness. There's, there's, there are times in life where we don't want to do, and this is the flesh. The flesh doesn't do what the Spirit of God wants to do. And that's when we say, no, I'm not going to be externally motivated by or, or demotivated by my flesh. My Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, we can't forget the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit has anointed me. So as the Spirit motivates your spirit to do what you do, that's where mature Christians should be at today. All right, to be internally motivated. All right, so Paul says that I serve God in the gospel with my spirit. All right, it wasn't a carnal, fleshly look at me, this is what I'm doing. He did what he did because he was internally motivated. And the Bible speaks more of the inner man than what it does the outer man, the body. More about the inner man. For example, let's have a look at a few scriptures and follow me along. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse number 16. All right, so we're looking at the internals now. All right, the internals. The inward man, in, internally motivated. Look at verse number 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perisheth, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we not, look not at the things which are seen, external, but at the things which are not seen, internal. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So you notice in verse number 16, he says, The outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day. By day, by day, by day, every day, the internal man, your spirit, which has been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, is renewed. The Spirit of God is renewing and motivating and, uh, and reviving on a day-to-day -day basis. Now listen, if we let him do that, if we let him do that, because we can resist the Holy Spirit. We can quench the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? When we focus on the external. When we allow the things that we see, the external things come upon us and burden us. If we allow those external things to come upon us, it grieves and quenches the Holy Spirit who wants to internally motivate us to do what we do for God. All right. Have a look at Ephesians chapter three. Ephesians chapter three. And this is, this is why, this is why uh, uh, continual Bible reading, um, being in the house of God when the doors are open, this is why it's important because as, the, as preaching and teaching and Bible reading goes forth, it, it should affect your spirit. Right? Now teaching has its place and teaching is imparting knowledge. And, and that is, that's the mind, right? But preaching, if you look at preaching, preaching affects the spirit. All right. It stirs the spirit of man into a uh, to make a decision for the things of God. All right. So that's what preaching does. Look at Ephesians chapter three. Look at verse number 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. So we're not excluding the Holy Spirit now. So this is not this is not a, a positive thinking type of thing if I just think positive thoughts positive thoughts positive thoughts and you try and g yourself up I, uh, I said to someone the other day 
I don't know if you've ever been to an Amway thing, you know, these whole, you, you go, all these Amway people get together and, and it's just like a, a, a big G up, you know what I mean? It's like, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. And then it's this massive big chart and they're trying to get themselves motivated to, to go out and, and make the sales and make the millions and all this sort of stuff. And they chant, we can do it, we can do it. That's the power of their positive thinking. But that's not what Christianity is all about. Christianity is all about the Holy Spirit, as we saw in this verse. And Paul was praying this, that they would be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. All right? And that word might is a very important word. It, it talks about miraculous power. Think about that. The Holy Spirit wants to strengthen your inner man with miraculous power. You could be a powerhouse for Jesus if you allow the Spirit of God to stir your inner man. So can you see the importance of the internal as far as a manifestation in the external? It's not the other way around. It's not the external trying to motivate us to do things for God. It's the internal that gets us motivated to go out and do something. You, can't, you, can't, you and I cannot preach the gospel if we're externally motivating ourselves. I've got to pick Jeff up. I've got to knock on doors. I've got to knock on doors. I've got to knock on doors. You know, it doesn't happen that way. It happens by praying in the Spirit, reading the Scriptures, seeking the Spirit of God to go and preach the Gospel and do all those things that we want to look at this year as far as ministering uh, to those around about us. Now, go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Remember Paul said in Romans 1 that he serves God in the Gospel with his Spirit, right? Now have a look at Romans chapter 12. Look at verse number 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. All right, Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now this verse is broken up into three sections which can be preached on their own, but they all fit together. All right, They all fit together. As a matter of fact, let me, let me say it this way. The business of serving the Lord must be with a fervent spirit. All right, the business of serving the Lord must be done with a fervent spirit. And we know that fervency is that is the word which means above normal temperature, fever pitch. All right. Now, for us, our body temperature, our core body temperature is, is a 37. 37 is our core body temperature, which it should run at. Anything over that, we're looking at a fever. There's something going on. And so the heat. And so what we're talking about when we're talking about fervency is that above normal temperature, that fever pitch. We're to pray fervently. right? We're to serve fervently. It's internal motivation. You can't get it. You know, I, my, my job as a preacher is many things. It's not you know, you preach the gospel and you preach messages to stir people up and exhort people. And that's part of my giftings to do that. But you can't rely on the preacher to do it all the time. You can't rely on other people to do it all the time. You've got to look to yourself and look internally in order to be a blessing externally. Right now, have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We've got two more scriptures after this. All right, two more scriptures after this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> Look at verse number 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death, where? In ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us. And he goes on. Notice verse number nine. They were despaired without, about their life. They were worried about their life. They were worried about dying. You know, I've never been in a position as a Christian where I've had to fear for my life. But Paul had it a number of times. He despaired even of life. But he says we had the sentence. We had the answer of death in ourselves. 
We didn't allow the external to motivate us. We had the answer in ourselves, the internal motivation. We're not going to trust in flesh. We're not going to trust in man, but we're going to trust in God that raises the dead. Right. So there's that internal motivation. Let's have a look at another scripture. Go to the book of Habakkuk. All right. The Old Testament. The book of Habakkuk. All right, minor prophets after Nahum, Habakkuk. If you can't find it, go to the index. Found it? Yep. <laughs> Have a look at Habakkuk chapter 2. Look at verse number 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables. Now look at this phrase, that he may run, that's motivation, that readeth it, All right? For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Notice what he's saying here. This word vision isn't, isn't this thing that you get like if you're in a trance and you, and you see something. The word vision has something to do with the word of God, right? You remember that uh, verse in Proverbs where there is no vision, the people perish. If there's no word of God, the people perish. We've got to have the word. So, so God is saying to Habakkuk, when I speak, you write that vision that you may run when you read it. In other words, if God gives you a promise and, uh, and the promise is a scriptural promise, you know what you do? You write that promise down so that when it comes time in your life when you're discouraged and you're feeling down and there's anything going to happen, you know what you do? You go back to the promise and you read the promise and you are to be motivated by what God says to go and do what he's told you to do. So the internal motivation comes through the word of God. You write the vision and make it plain that he may run that readeth it. All right. So dealing with internal motivation, dealing with God uh, motivating us from our spirit. Now, let's go to one, pat one more passage of scripture and we're going to stay here. Go with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm going to give you an Old Testament illustration now of internal motivation. All right, internal motivation. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 30. If you're there, say amen. All right, verse number one. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold it. So he came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons, for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That's internal motivation. All right. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We're going to leave the reading there, but we're going to make some reference to some other scriptures in this passage, right? From this passage that we just read, I want to give you a few things as far as being internally motivated, all right? Because there are days that, that you're going to wake up, I'm sure, and there's probably been days recently, tomorrow may be just that day on a Monday, that you might wake up and it's like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. But you know what? There are things that motivate you to get out of bed. I've got, I've got the business. I've got to go to work. I've got to take kids to school. I've got to get up. I've got to go do this. I've got to do that. So there are things that motivate you to get out of bed. But sometimes you don't feel like it. All right. So here we've got David who is facing a very distressing time in his life. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now let me give you a few things about that. Number one. Everyone here 
was in great distress, including David. Everyone here. Now, let me just say this. Everyone was focused on their own issues, but forgot that even David's wives, wives had been taken captive and, and his children. But they spake of stoning David because he's the leader. But David had lost or had taken captive just like the other men, right? So everyone here is in great distress. So because of that, you can't rely on other people to motivate you. All right? You can't rely on other people. As a matter of fact, it's, it's an important part of leadership to be able to motivate yourself. Now, you may not... You may not lead a church or a, or a business or whatever. You might not be a leader of people. You don't have people following you. But you are a leader. In Proverbs chapter 25 and verse number 28, the Bible says this. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. You know what that is? That's, that's personal leadership. If you can't lead yourself, how can you lead others? If I can't lead myself, how can I lead my family? If I can't lead myself, how can I lead a church? So it do, you don't become a leader just because you have people. You're a leader when you can lead yourself. And a good part of leadership is able to encourage yourself in the things of the Lord when times are distressing. All right, this is distressing time. And David was grieved because the men that he's leading, let's stone him, let's stone him, let's kill him. Think about that. We want to kill him. This man that had led them to victory on a number of times. Their wives have been taken captive and their kids and they wanted to kill him. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. All right. So understand that everybody, all right, everybody faces something. That's why you can't rely on the external all the time. All right. That's why sometimes it's like, oh, let's ring up pastor. Let's see if I pray with John. Or let me ring up this sister in the Lord. And, and I've got to get some encouragement. I've got to get some But you may ring up some like one of us on a day when, when we need encouraging. <laughs> Who's going to encourage? You know, the, the thing about leadership and being a pastor, and Jeff spoke about it this morning, is that, you know, most people don't think about the pastor having difficulties. Well, he just doesn't know what I'm going through. And it's all, sometimes it's all internal in the point of, oh, look what I'm going through, look what I'm going through. Okay, but here's the thing. Everybody goes through something. All right? And because of that, you've got to learn to get internally motivated. So everyone was in great distress. Number two... I want you to think about this. What you choose to meditate on affects your motivation. What you choose to meditate on affects your motivation. We could go to a number of scriptures, but we won't. But there are many times in the Psalms where David med meditated upon the things of God while he's laying on his bed. You, you can lay on your bed at night and meditate on the external pressures of life. It's your choice. Motivate, uh, meditate on that or meditate on the things of God. All right? Meditate on the word. Do you know that Satan is so good that when you're going through a time of distress and in, and in difficulty, that he tries to get your thoughts away from the book? All, right? All you need is one word, one verse. You don't need a thousand verses for whatever it is that you're going through. All you need is one, one word from God is powerful enough. Right? So what you choose to meditate on affects your motivation. Man, if I chose to meditate on, uh, on uh, I don't know, um, if I chose to meditate on my own inabilities, or if I chose, if I chose to meditate on, on some Sunday nights when we've had, had hardly anyone, or even some Sunday mornings. You know, there have been some Sunday mornings, especially after a good day, or a good Sunday, and when we say a good Sunday, we've had plenty in attendance, <laughs> And then the next Sunday, people are sick and away, and it's like the attendance has gone. Boom. If I choose to meditate on, on who's not here and where is everybody, I could have a temptation to just throw in a towel. Couldn't I? Right. But so I've got to, I've got to make sure that I choose to meditate on the right thing. I meditate on the fact, well, Lord, it's your church. 
You're the one that builds your church. They're your people. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have responsibilities, but I've, that's what I've got to choose to meditate. I can choose to meditate on the negative or the positive. Right? And so do you. It's your choice. What you choose to meditate on affects your motivation. Now, number three, let me give you this. There are times when you can't rely on others for your motivation. And we've already spoken about that. There are times when you can't rely on others. You know, um, uh, there are people that have the gift of exhortation. It's, it's, it's very good because they, they, they want to encourage. They want to exhort. And that's part of their giftings. But that doesn't mean that they, they don't go through struggles and need encouragement themselves. All right. Now, let me just say this, um, and it's a bit hard at the moment because Pastor Marsh's phone, none of his phones work. It's unreal. His mobile phone, his home phone, none of them work until they get all connected up. So you can't send him a text or call him, but pray for him. Right. And as he hears that the brethren are praying, you know what, that, that will encourage him. All right. But there are times when you can't rely on other people. And so you've got to rely on God. It's you and God and the word. All right? You and God and the word. And you meditate on the word. And you, uh, and you do what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he was internally motivated to do what he did. Now, let me give you the last thing. Right? David's motivation led to his mobilization. All right? His motivation led to his mobilization. So to be internally motivated means you're going to get up and do something. All right? Now, I want you to turn over the page. Look at verse number seven. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Elimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and thou, and without fail, recover all. Wow, that's encouragement right there. So David's encouraging himself in the Lord. He's inquiring of the Lord, right? Now look at what happens once he's motivated. Look at verse number 9. So David went. Verse number 10. David pursued. Verse number 18. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives. Verse 19, David recovered all. All because David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He knew what it was to get internally motivated and once he was internally motivated, he mobilised himself, he inquired of God and said, you know what God, am I going to just allow this to overtake me or shall I go and pursue, shall I inquire and do it? And God said, go, you're going to recover all. And he went in the strength of what God had said and he mobilised himself. And by the way, the men that were following him, he got them mobilised as well and said, let's go and get them. And they recovered all. They recovered all. You can't just sit around all the time waiting for someone to say, hey, cheer up, let's get going, let's do this. They may not even come by your place. So you've got to know what it is to internally motivate yourself. And once you can internally motivate yourself, you don't have to rely on people. You rely on the, on the, and now again, a balance, let me just finish with a balance. There's nothing wrong with encouraging somebody. But there are times when you're not going to get that and that's when you need to encourage yourself in the Lord your God to be internally motivated. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and we pray, God, that the message tonight would just uh, bear fruit in our lives and that we would know what it is to be internally motivated to do the things that we need to do for you. May we learn like David did to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God inquire of you and get mobilized in doing what we need to do. Lord, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the blessings of this morning, the visitors that we had, the spirit that we had, and thank you for the gathering tonight. Bless us now as we go away. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God.